Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll break down Pikachu's evolution from Steadfast Companion Pika. to Champion Level Dragon Slayer. If you haven't done so already, make sure to check out Pikachu's Kanto history, as it will give excellent context into all the epic battles and noteworthy storylines we're about to discuss. This video is brought to you by Boxu. Pikachu's trip to the Orange Islands began shortly after Ash lost the Indigo League and friend and foe alike and returned home to Pallet Town so he could celebrate his success in the episode Pallet Party Panic. Because Professor Oak requested that Ash travel to the Orange Islands and retrieve the GS ball from Professor Ivy, he and Pikachu left home almost as soon as the celebrations concluded. While en route to Ivy's lab, Pikachu fried a Fira who once plagued him as a Spiro, bid farewell to Pidgeot, flew aboard a blimp, and narrowly survived a harrowing crash and a scare in the air. Following Ash's meeting with Ivy and retrieval of the GS Ball and Pokeball Peril, he and Pikachu said their goodbyes to Brock and ventured to Tangelo Island. During their time there in the Lost Lapras, Pikachu saved the water ice type from some vicious thugs, met Tracy, helped add Lapras to Ash's team, and watched as his trainer registered for the Orange League, an anime-exclusive competition that involved gym leaders, athletic challenges, and a supreme champion. Upon receiving permission to delay receipt of the GS Ball from Professor Oak so that he and his team could earn new badges, Ash traveled through the region's various islands with with Pikachu by his side. In the course of Ash's adventure, Pikachu led an incredibly active lifestyle as his most trusted ally. He clashed with Team Rocket, doted upon Togepi, helped Ash get Snorlax and Snack Attack, danced on the Pokemon Showboat and Stage Fight, warmed up Charizard and Charizard Chills, assisted in saving the world during the Power of One, and briefly turned evil in Pikachu Revolts before helping put an end to Butch and Cassidy's scheme. Beyond his utility support, Pikachu also proved a constant presence in Ash's many battles throughout the region. He always tried his hardest, but all his opponents were world-class fighters, whose power dwarfed all of the Pokémon he fought at the Indigo League and the various Kanto gyms. In the Mandarin Island mismatch, for example, he fought a Cloyster owned by Prima of the Elite Four. Showing that Pikachu still had much to learn, Cloyster withdrew from Thunderbolt, reflected agility, tanked Thunder, activated Rage, landed Aurora Beam, and triumphed with Takedown. Despite his super effective advantage over water types, Pikachu suffered a second defeat to one of their kind in the episode Charizard Chills when he fought against Orange League competitor Tad's Poliwrath. Poliwrath evaded Thunderbolt, shrugged off Quick Attack, put Pikachu to sleep with Hypnosis, and won with Water Gun. Even though Pikachu struggled against the powerful opponents Ash faced throughout the saga, he proved himself a formidable threat while tied to Meowth and lost in the wilderness and bound for trouble. Alongside Meowth, he zapped a Pidgeot, took charge using some high voltage intimidation, and fought a Rhydon. Rhydon's ground type immunity presented a major issue to Pikachu's electricity, but Meowth tickled the giant, made it vulnerable from within, and gave Pikachu the window he needed to shock it into submission. Prior to returning to their respective teammates, the rivals bonded over their victory, broke bread, took an adorable nap, and got saved from certain doom by Snorlax and Arbok. Although they became so friendly towards each other that Meowth believed they would have made for the best of friends in another life, their newfound friendship fell to pieces in Pokemon Food Fight when Meowth equipped himself with the Mecha Meowthinator, nullified all of Pikachu's advances, and forced his retreat. Before we tackle Pikachu's epic performance at the Orange Islands gyms, I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor Boxu and tell you how much I enjoy being a subscriber to the Japanese Snack Box. If you're looking to try out a wide variety of authentic foods, candies, and teas, I highly recommend you sign up for Boxu as they send you new snacks every month direct to your doorstep. The thing I love most about Boxu is that it helps me get out of my comfort zone and try a wide variety of snacks that I never knew I wanted. Some of my favorites from the last box are the Almeri Apple Caramel Yakoi Sable and the Savory Dundun Yaki which is perfect for relaxing at day's end. To get 10% off your subscription from Boxu, click the first link in the description and use my code ALEX10. Make sure to act fast, as anyone who subscribes before December 31st will be automatically entered in a giveaway to win free tickets to Japan. And now back to Pikachu's history. Much like he did in Kanto, Pikachu appeared in the majority of the orange gyms. In pursuit of the Sea Ruby badge in Naval Maneuvers, for example, he built and raced a toboggan. For the Spike Shell badge in Misty Meets Her Match, Pikachu aced an accuracy test and fought Trevita gym leader Rudy's Electabuzz. Electabuzz absorbed Thunderbolt, countered Quick Attack, and won with Thunder Punch, but Pikachu's efforts so impressed his trainer that he was used alongside Charizard in Pokemon Double Trouble against Kumquat gym leader Luana. Luana's Alakazam and Marowak took advantage of Pikachu and Charizard's bickering at the battle's start by focusing all all their attacks on the fire type, but Pikachu turned things around by breaking Alakazam's concentration and saving his ally from massive injury. As thanks, the fire type returned the favor, caught him within his wing, started to understand the power of teamwork, and took flight with him atop his back. Once the duo was in the air, they tricked their opponents into defeating each other with Bone Ring and Hyper Beam. 
Not only did their victory earn Ash the Jade Star, but it also qualified him for a battle with Drake, the Orange Crew's supreme gym leader and champion. In Hello Pumalo, Pikachu started off Ash's battle with Drake by facing down a Ditto who was so powerful that it regularly swept a challenger's entire team. Ditto transformed into Pikachu, withstood painful jolts, fired off thunder, exchanged thunder shocks, and dodged thunderbolt. The Pikachu absorbed its electricity, pressed onward with quick attack, and won out with a tail slam. Drake then summoned Onyx, so Pikachu returned to Ash's side and conserved his energy until Charizard, Squirtle, and Tauros fell to Drake's Dragonite in the appropriately named episode, Enter the Dragonite. The Dragon-type overcame agility, sent Pikachu flying, and shot off Hyper Beam, but Pikachu turned his tail into a spring, dodged the blast, landed on its head, and won with a thunder so powerful that electricity cackled all throughout the stadium. Thanks to Pikachu's tremendous attack, Ash ruined Drake's undefeated record, conquered the Orange League, received a fancy trophy, and entered the Orange Islands Hall of Fame. After saying goodbye to Lapras and Viva Las Lapras, Pikachu and Ash returned home in a tense situation and challenged Gary to battle in the rivalry revival, hoping to replicate their victory against Drake. Unfortunately for the heroic duo, Gary's Eevee reflected Quick Attack, evaded Thunderbolt, put Pikachu on edge with Takedown, and won with Skull Bash. Not only did the loss inspire Ash to follow Gary to Johto, register for the Johto League, and continue with his training, but it also served as a stark reminder to both him and viewers alike that he and Pikachu still had ample competition ahead of them. If you're hoping to hear more about Pikachu's Johto adventures, I'll be covering them in a future class. For now though, let's get to Pikachu's Orange Island battle record. Pikachu won against a Wild Firo, a Thug's Hitmonchan, a Thug's Spiro, a Thug's Beedrill, Jesse's Arbok, James's Weezing, a Wild Rhydon, Luana's Marowak, Luana's Alakazam, Drake's Ditto, and Drake's Dragonite. He lost to Prima's Cloyster, Rudy's Electabuzz, Tad's Polyrath, and Gary's Eevee. Over the course of the saga, Pikachu used Thundershock, Thunderbolt, Thunder, Agility, and Quick Attack. While Kanto established Pikachu's kind personality and friendship with Ash, the Orange Saga transformed him from a mid-level fighter into a powerhouse who is arguably just as powerful as Ash's Charizard. What I love most about Pikachu's growing power during the short season is that it helped the Saga feel more like a fitting end to Ash's journey. Had Pikachu's story ended then and there, I would have been totally satisfied with its narrative conclusion. Beating a Dragonite but losing to an Eevee would have been a great way for the writers to show that he and Ash had achieved much in their journey, but that the road to becoming a Pokemon Master is never ending. And with that, class is adjourned. I'd like to extend a special thanks to both Boxu and the channel's patrons as their support has made the continued growth of the channel all the more possible. If you'd like access to exclusive perks, make sure to sign up for Patreon via the link in the description. For additional extra credit, like this video, comment your thoughts on Ash's Pikachu, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're never late. Until next time, catch you later.